A big night for the Big Blue as the UK basketball team takes on Stony Brook in the NCAA tournament. We're live in Des Moines with a look ahead to tonight's game. I really tore everything up. A man under arrest after a three county police chase. What he told us led to it. And what some Kentucky hospitals are doing to protect their staff after a rise in addicts seeking treatment in emergency rooms. This is WQIT News at 6. Good evening. The madness has already started, and tonight it's the Cats' turn in the NCAA tournament. UK faces Stony Brook in a first round game. The team and fans hope tonight begins the road that ends with Kentucky's ninth national championship. Rob Bromley joins us live from Des Moines, Iowa, with our top story at 6. Rob? <laughs> Hello from Des Moines, just outside Wells Fargo Arena, where I'll tell you there were some big crowds here this afternoon to see UConn and the Kansas Jayhawks advance, and uh, everybody eager and looking forward to tonight. Cats, the number four seed in the East, going up against 13th seeded Stony Brook. And as you are aware, John Calipari was an unhappy man last Sunday with his team seeding. Kentucky faces the possibility of a matchup with Indiana Saturday, and then in a late game tonight, against a Cinderella. But Cal wasn't doing any more complaining when he was asked about the seeding yesterday. I like to poke the bear the hour after that show, and then after that it really doesn't matter. You know, I poke the bear and then the bear chases me. They haven't caught me yet. I've run up the tree a few times, but, you know, but I, it doesn't matter at this point. Now it's like you got to play games and it's not changing, and so... Well, that's right. It is time to uh, get down to business and play the games. We're going to have it all for you tonight, 940, as Kentucky takes on Stony Brook in the late game here in Des Moines. Lee K. Howard will be here with me for a preview, a live preview, on the CW Lexington at 630. And he's here with me right now. What about these uh, Stony Brook Seawolves now? You know, Stony Brook looks like a team that's going to come in here with a lot of confidence. And we've started to see the fans coming around. The Kentucky mm -hmm. fans are starting to pile into the arena. A couple hours still till tip-off. And one thing you've learned when you come to an event like this is just how far reaching the Big Blue Nation actually is. We met quite a few fans yesterday of Kentucky who live in Iowa. And just this morning, I met some brothers who are big Kentucky fans despite growing up all their lives in Kansas. Live in beautiful Des Moines, Iowa, where tonight, Kentucky Wildcats will kick off their run for number nine. The fans have traveled from all over the country to support their Kentucky Wildcats. Oh, it's very exciting. This will be my first Kentucky game. Born and raised in Kansas. My dad grew up in Lexington, was born in Frankfurt, so lifelong Kentucky fans, but this is our first opportunity that Kentucky's come to our region of the region of the states. Alec Johnston and his younger brother Drew have always cheered for the Cats despite Drew being a Kansas grad. I went to college when we won the championship against KU, so it's sort of like, do I want to just deck out in Kentucky gear? <laughs> yes, you uh, the Johnston brothers agree this Kentucky basketball team is playing its best basketball in the month of March. The offensive efficiency, I definitely think, is great. You know, just being able to watch them actually go down and score really well. I mean, you have to have a good team cohesiveness in order to be able to do that. As for a prediction for tonight's game? Well, this will be my first Kentucky game. You know, it would be nice if Kentucky could win by 20, but, you know, I'll take any victory. But uh, hopefully, you know, we'll move on, play Chattanooga, and we'll beat them. <laughs> and did you notice that? Yeah, not, I did. Not only is he rooting for a Kentucky win, he's rooting for an Indiana loss to Chattanooga. So uh, that he's, he, this is his first game. This is going to be big for him. Indiana and Chattanooga in the first game here tonight. I've got much more coming up in sports. We'll hear from Jamal Murray as Cal talks about him as well. That's it for now here in Des Moines. Jennifer and Sam, back to you. Robin Lee Kay, thank you. For more UK and NCAA tournament coverage, just go to our website, WKYT.com. Tonight, a man accused of an unusual crime spree through three counties is telling his side of the story from jail. Police arrested 31 year old Christopher Smith early this morning after they say he broke into some homes in Pulaski County, then stole a truck, and led police on a chase to Boyle County. As Phil Pendleton tells us, Smith claims he doesn't remember a lot of it. A woman on Rainwater Lane made a frantic call for help about 1 o'clock Thursday morning, whispering to the dispatcher of an intruder. She said it was a man she knew. She said she knew he was bad news. We're 
is he inside your house now? He's outside right now. He's got a gun now. Does he have any weapons? He does, he does. What does he have? I don't know, a little pistol. Police arrived and the man ran off into the woods. Moments later, the 911 center got another call from this house on Hopeful School Road. Someone has broke into our house. Our church has been stolen. Not long after that, at Family Dollar, more calls for help. This time of a crazy guy in a red pickup squealing tires, yelling at people armed with a gun. We were pretty scared and uh, there was a gun shot fired at it. From here in Somerset, the chase turned north toward Lincoln County and then into Danville where it was finally stopped with spike strips. Smith tells me from jail that he believes that he reached speeds of 150 miles an hour. I was under the influence. What were you under the influence of? Uh, methamphetamines. He says he shot up on meth, but couldn't remember all that he's accused of doing. Apparently got in a high speed pursuit last night from OL over what, three counties. I evidently tore everything up. Police say no one was hurt in the chase. In Pulaski County, Phil Pendleton, WKYT. Smith also says he doesn't remember stealing the truck, but he says he believed police when they told him he did that. Tonight, Lexington police have named a suspect in a deadly shooting outside a fast food restaurant. Police say they've obtained an arrest warrant for 21-year-old Devontae Hobbs. He faces murder and robbery charges. Lexington police are asking for help finding him. They say on January 12th, Hobbs shot 23-year-old Timothy Brown Jr. in the parking lot of a McDonald's on Russell Cave Road. New tonight, two people face charges after deputies in Laurel County say someone found two young children alone outside. The Laurel County Sheriff's Office arrested 25-year-old Sarah Powell and her boyfriend, 28-year-old Sean Bosch. Deputies say Powell's two- and four-year-old children showed up at a home on Kentucky Hollow Road. They say the two-year-old did not have any clothes on. Deputies say they found Powell and Bosch sleeping in their home a mile away. They also say they found horrible living conditions and drug paraphernalia in the home. Kentucky's drug epidemic continues to change into different drugs of choice for people who abuse them. But lately, police are facing what they call the scariest drug they've seen, not just for the user, but for emergency crews as well. New at 6 night, Miranda Combs takes us to Baptist Health in Corbin, where the ER team had to change its game plan. From the patient's point of view, it's a place to get well. And these are the people that make it happen. This is organized chaos. So one of y'all get the Ambu bag out and, and, and hook it up. With most patients, this ER team at Baptist Health Corbin can predict what they will need. But things have changed lately. Does it make you angry? It makes me sad. Because. What can you do? She's been an ER nurse for more than 20 years. Their superhuman strength, worse than PCP and heroin that they're on. I've never seen anything like it. It's a threat, not just in this hospital. The most violent people that I have ever encountered. We talked to police in southern Kentucky. And keeping an eye on our uh, staff members is the first concern to me and then the inmates. Even the Whitley County Jail. They uh, cannot speak in sentences, can't put sentences together, can't, they're not coherent enough to comprehend sentences. Um, Scary. Oh, terrifying. In fact, many times it's inmates that come through these doors. Thank you, girls. Coming Thank off you. a cocktail of synthetic drugs. They are not aware and they are not cognitive and you can't reorient them to what is going on. At the, they're not in the moment. They're paranoid, they're hallucinating. And they have no recall of what's going on. And that's the scary thing. Scary, they say, because they aren't in control. The patient or the staff. You can't hold if you hold them too tight, you're you're you risk the harm or injuring themselves. If you don't hold them tight enough to prevent them harming themselves, you risk harm to the staff. So they call this a safety huddle. We want to make sure that we have everything ready. We have security ready. Make sure that we have all of our equipment for intubation ready, uh, our assessment ready. Before the possible Anybody synthetic drug overdose shows up, they get ready because there's one known, and that's the unknown. They have this uncontrollable violent movement that they can't control, and neither can we. These officers seen here in the parking lot dealing with an investigation during our visit told us Baptist Health Security spend about 
50% of their time in the emergency department these days just because of patients coming in on synthetic drugs. It's a strain being felt across the state. Legislators like State Senator Whitney Westerfield are trying to stay ahead of the synthetics to outlaw them before they take over. Synthetic drugs continue to be a problem. We see them in different levels of potency. The problem with synthetic drugs, lawmakers say, is people are constantly coming up with new concoctions. And that's the constant concern for this team of health care workers. Now what we're seeing is hodgepodge of concoctions that they're thinking of at home using common chemicals in their house. In Whitley County, Miranda Combs, WKYT. Since 2010, there have been multiple efforts by Kentucky lawmakers to strengthen the laws related to synthetic drugs. A bill that would toughen penalties for having or trafficking synthetic drugs passed the Senate last month and is now in a House committee. The driver of a tractor trailer says he crashed after his GPS led him down a rural Bath County road. It happened about 5.30 this morning on West Tunnel Hill Road near Sharpsburg. Crews spent hours cleaning up oil that spilled from the truck's engine and pulling the truck back onto the road. The Bath County Emergency Management Director said crews have seen an increase in large trucks getting stuck on roads they shouldn't be on. Sometimes it's best just to use a map instead of trying to do a GPS because GPS will try to take you up back roads. And in this case, uh, they took them up a back road that wasn't exactly made for semi trucks. Police say both people who are in the tractor trailer are expected to be okay.